His dog or yours who would win? His dog's pretty freaking cute. All right. Let's look at Rick Owens' minimal home while I go pee real quick. I was working with a dealer in New York who would send me images of sarcophaguses that were up for auction. Finally, this one came. It was so worth the wait. We call her Liza after Liza Minnelli. I Vogue, I'm Rick Owens, and this is my place in Concordia, Italy. My factory is across the street, and this is where I come to do my collections. In this space, I don't like living with a lot of things. I'm not very acquisitive, but the things that I do live with are very special to me, and I'm going to show you around. OK. I wouldn't call myself a collector, maybe more of an eliminator, but the few things that I have are probably things that I've wanted for a really long time. This is a George Means sculpture. He was a Belgian sculptor associated with the Viennese Secession. It's called Kneeling Youth, and it's a study, I believe, for a fountain that's encircled by these youths leaning over it. It's about introversion, introspection, narcissism. Well, this is my interpretation. I just like the mood that, that it creates. It's kind of severe and a little bit maudlin. Did Dr. Mike say his house in the motherfucking Hamptons? I don't think he said that, but it could be. A little bit melancholy, but also vaguely spiritual. When I am in Concordia, I- <laughs> This guy looks like a necromancer is Rick Owens, man. <laughs> I am focused on creating. This is a period of rigor and this is a period of training. And the gym takes up pretty much half the apartment. In any place that I've ever lived in, including Hollywood Boulevard, Los Angeles, I've always insulated and upholstered my spaces with army blankets, vintage army blankets. What? This is inspired by Joseph. That's kind of sick. That's, dude, god damn. Okay, chatters were saying you would hate this, but like, not really. I think this is dope as fuck. Boys, who was my first art hero when I went to art school, and he used army blankets as a symbol of protection and insulation and isolation. Bro, he he's just like, it's the, <laughs> I mean, I think like the sarcophagi is that, is that the way to say it? I don't know. That is not. The, the mummies are weird, okay? Really fucking weird. Why would you want to have, like, a literal... Why would you want, like, a real... Like, real-life dead person in your house? I mean, I, I assume they don't have the, the real dead person. The Army Surplus store was where I would get my original fabrics. I would make clothes out of the duffel bags, out of blankets, out of parachute clothes. Since then which must be like 30 years ago. Every place I have, I cover with army blankets. When I work on interiors or furniture, I'm pretty much a reductivist. I don't think about domestic details that much. They feel a little fussy to me. So the domesticity in this apartment is pretty minimal. That's my closet. I don't have very many clothes. That's a little stack of t-shirts, a little stack of shorts for here, for the factory, for every day. And that's pretty much it. I always kind of like sticking to a decision. So when I think- Bro, he sounds like Asmongold a little bit. He also kind of looks like what Asmongold would look like at that age. I, I don't know what's going on. I'll pretty much stick to it for a couple of years. My clothing choices have evolved from- Bro, he's literally, he's Asmongold if Asmongold was, was dripped out, okay? <laughs> Hollywood Boulevard, it's always been some kind of shorts and it just gradually changes over the years. Every collection, I just have- Asmongoth. <laughs> 20 more shorts made. The difference here is that there's clearly an intentionality to everything in the space. Dr. Mike's felt thrown together a nouveau riche. Yes.
They're like, I can't believe Chatters compared this to Dr. Mike's house. This is literally like, you might not appreciate it, okay? You might not like it. You might think it's creepy and weird, which, by the way, I think he probably loves that you, a normie, would think this is creepy and weird anyway. But this is literally like, this is, this man is like, he basically is living inside of an art exhibit, okay? Like, that's, the, to compare this to like, uh, to compare this to like, even when you look at like Dr. Mike's, um, uh, even when you look at his like shelves full of things that he's gotten all around the travels, like there was like cause toys and shit on there. This dude's house is like, he literally is like stealing art from countries that he's not supposed to have type shit. And I just have little stacks of them everywhere. When I first put this place together seven years ago, I wanted Italian rationalism. I wanted something kind of monastic, something kind of severe. I like the classical tone of travertine interior sets. I like putting myself into that zone. I wanted some place- What does this guy do? It. It's Rick Owens. You guys don't know who Rick Owens is? He's like an insanely famous designer. Remember those? Parachute pants, not parachute, but like low drop crotch pants that I made Austin buy and the shoes. That's Rick Owens. Is it very, very, very famous designer? I don't know because I'm poor. Bitch, I was eating manager special chicken and I know what the fuck Rick Owens was. It's just about like interests. People always, people always personally. Oh my God. Oh. God, I'm losing it. No, no, dude. There's hella people in this chat that are also broke that fucking know who Rick Owens is. It's about interest. It's about interest. It's about interest. That's it. A lot of you motherfuckers want to wanna LARP as like, uh, you know, living ascetic lifestyles. You are interested in buying a 4090. Maybe you can't afford it, but you know the inner workings of an NVIDIA graphics card and what that GPU would allow you to do. Okay? Some people don't know that. That's, that's it. That's like. forty ninety has a function. Sure. Okay. Warhammer figurines then. It's not about interest. Interest, Avi. If you knew you'd never be able to afford these things, you drop the interest because it hurts. I mean, I was still very much interested in this when I never thought I would be able to afford them either. But regardless it would be a blank space for me so i could get into a zone of putting a collection together i might have overdone it's also another one of those like it's also another one of those instances where like um this is once again probably the worst Do you even own any rig ones i own one pant one of the pants the, the same pants that i made austin buy and i wear it all the time and they're sick um but a lot of the stuff i don't really like uh, a lot of the stuff that he, he, he makes is, like, too crazy for me. The drop crotch ones, yeah. Being into the art of fashion, I sometimes forget this is so foreign for a lot of basic folks. Yes. That's the thing, like, um, a, a, a lot of people, especially in this community, will go and look at this and, like, uh, and, and you thought you had dark shadows? I I don't think so. I don't think I have any dark shadows or anything. Um, some people haven't seen Maison, Maison Margiela Hot Couture 24, and I'm so sad for them. Um, this is not a good space. No, Dark Shadows uh, is the uh, Rick Owens is like other. I mean, it's still made by Rick Owens. Um, it's uh. How do I describe this? I don't think a lot of people that are spending a lot of time on Twitch, especially in this community, give a fuck about fashion and probably find it to be like disgusting, uh, extravagant, sometimes gaudy, and uh, and and and, um, and totally inaccessible, gate kept, paywalled, all that shit. Okay, they don't see it as like a way to express yourself artistically. Or, or they give a shit about the craft at all, right? And that's perfectly valid. That just doesn't mean that it is... Um, that doesn't... 
that doesn't change the reality. Here's how I know most people actually don't give a shit about fashion because no one has even brought up how problematic Rick Owens is, okay? Which, if I recall correctly, much like many of the other designers, he's a very problematic guy. So that's how I knew this community has no fucking clue about, uh, about any of this shit. You just looked at him and you were like, he's a weirdo. Well, it's definitely beyond that. People conflate fashion with bourgeois excess, but you can be broke and still have drip. Yes. Um, all of the, all of the fashion lovers in the chat are holding their tongues so well, so far. Do you consider yourself a revolutionary communist? Do you think I consider myself a revolutionary communist? Ask that question to yourself. Does the guy who regularly talks about how sick it is that the abundance under neoliberalism, uh, neoliberal capitalism has actually created a, a, a effective sedation upon a mass population that he thinks should be replicated in every other uh, economic organization of society to the best of the ability of whatever central planning mechanism exists. Do you think that guy who likes luxury items and is like very open-minded about people uh, in the, no matter where uh, he was in his own personal life and his own personal finances has always been uh, someone who understands that people like to consume things and it makes them feel good. And they should be able to do that. Do you think that that guy's a revolutionary communist? No, I'm not a revolutionary communist. Yeah, gamers spend a fortune on skins for their characters. They care about fashion more than they will admit. That's, that's true, that too. And it, I put travertine everywhere I could. I put it on the walls, on the floor. I wanted a travertine box to work in kind of like a cave, a travertine cave, something stone. It's pretentious and for the most part, big fashion names, not about expressing yourself, but much more being a part of an exclusive in-group. I say this as someone who loves genuine individual style, but Rick Owens and all these other big brands are not about creativity or breaking norms. They were. It's just that when you are for an extended period of time, the way that fashion works is that it trickles down and it becomes the norm and therefore, if you are not constantly improving upon your original, uh, the original ingenuity of your of your artistic expression, then yeah, you end up becoming uh, boring. And just the only thing that defines your uh, your product is the is the price point. It's so funny though because it's like, it's it's funny because like, there are entire fields studying. Like what people like Rick Owens has done or like the history of fashion. Like this is an entire thing. So like people cast it. Like it's so funny when people just go, dude, this shit sucks. <laughs> it's so stupid. And you move on. And you can, you could be a little bit more open-minded about it. I think it is, it is art. It's wearable art. I know that I wanted to live in stone. I've always been impressed by the skulls in Italian churches. This skull I got from a medical school auction That's years insane. ago. And I use it as a memento mori, as a reminder that all is vanity, that ah! one day my skull is gonna be on somebody else's desk. So seize the day, seize the moment. That is fucking, oh, oh, that's a random person's skull, dog. That's weird as hell. That's weird as hell, dude. The pistols are from my father's collection. He was a very conservative, kind of stridently moralist who I had a. Oh, <laughs> suspicious that his quite conservative father had Nazi pistols. Okay, dog. <clears throat> Difficult relationship with. We used to be horrified, mom and me. About this is your hero? Wait, I never said he's my hero. What the fuck are you talking about? What? Let me tell you something, okay? I never even remotely touched upon that. Where are you getting this? 
defending the principle behind like understanding why people appreciate fashion is entirely different than writing for Rick Owens. This man is far from a hero of mine, okay? Not even remotely close. About having guns around the house, but now they are an affectionate reminder of him. And I like the association with the kneeling youth, with the gym in between, the vulnerability of youth, the vitality of the gym, and the resolution of the skull and the pistols. The terrace overlooks the factory right over there. I asked the gardeners. Who are my heroes? Jeremy Corbyn, okay? That's my hero. A real life, real life in the real world existing person, okay? Not fucking Rick Owens. The landscape artist to are so never dumb. touch this <laughs> garden. I wanted it as shaggy, as chaotic, as wild as possible. Oh, look at those. Beautiful. Where does he live? Shaggy. These chairs are by the Italian futurist artist Giacomo Balla. Oh, he lives in Italy? They're very Italian. severe and yet kind of fantastic at the same time. Giacomo Balla is usually a lot more colorful than this, so I was really lucky to find something so subdued. They are so uncomfortable. I was about to there, say, there's fucking other hard, eyes off. The angle of the back, it's, you have to sit so upright. So it feels like a church pew, a little it bit. It looks punishing. like a church pew. I rarely sit in them, but I love them so much. Nothing blows up chat. Like when Hans never talks about fashion, I'm here for it. Yeah. I think a lot of people, a lot of people look at like, um, the way that we talk about fashion in here. A lot of people think like, it's just about like not looking weird and gross, I guess. But I think beyond that, there is like, um, at least at this stage, right? At this stage of fashion, it turns into um, a, a method of expression. Uh, there's a lot of craft and a lot of art artistry that goes into it. You can literally see the same discourse as chat in the YouTube comments. Yeah, probably. Um, but yeah, it's um, it is a it is a form of self expression. I mean, a lot of it is unrelatable to most people. Um, this part is definitely true. But having said that, I think a, a, like Rick Owens is is relatively inaccessible. You can still, if you do care about it, you can still find uh, Rick Owens pieces, like older pieces. Uh, in like thrift stores and shit like that. If you do actually care about that sort of thing, um, but regardless of, I think chat feels like being fashionable is classes. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people don't understand this. For some socioeconomically marginalized folks. Fashion is a genuine form of class mobility. I guess. Showers, graphic tees, and cargo shorts don't take fashion advice from these nerds. No. Stop saying only in LA. Oh my God. Speaking from experience, I don't even know what you're referencing, so I don't know. But... I think one of the, I think one of the things that people, <laughs> one of the things that people like, maybe if they do travel, right? One of the things that you see, if you go to like France, if you go to Paris, or if you go to Italy, if you go to Rome, or maybe not Rome, but like you go to like any Italian city and you see like a level of, of elevated fashion and you don't really even think about why that is the way that it is. It's not like every single person that is living in said cities are also incredibly wealthy. As a matter of fact, they're oftentimes not wealthy at all it, it, when adjusted to like American wages and American standards. Same with even New York. Okay. I think that much of that definitely comes from, yeah, the average Japanese person mogs Americans fashion wise, even like 60 year old grandmas in the country. A lot of that comes from, I think, uh, holistically, 
uh, living around so much art, maybe, and also uh, caring about it. Much of this can also be good tailoring uh, and, and uh, putting a level of attention and detail into uh, what you wear. And you consume that when you go. If you are fortunate enough to be able to visit these places, you kind of look at that and you, you recognize it. Okay? But then you don't really think about like how that happens. Motherfuckers like him are how that happens throughout history. They've always been... Um, like a lot of these designers are always like the ones that work in these massive fashion houses. Like they study this, they, they learn it and they are looking for new ways of, uh, looking uh, for new ways of like pushing boundaries. Right. And not to get very, uh, devil's wear Prada here, but that video, uh, that, that famous like Meryl Streep moment in devil wears Prada is real. It goes from, it goes from. Um, it goes from runways all the way to uh, it goes from runways to like rich people wearing it and and uh, you know many 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 seasons later all the way into the fucking bargain bin of a Ross dress for less. Yeah, it is the uh, it is straight up the scene from Devil Wears Prada blue sweater moment because it is that is real that is how this works. Cerulean blue. Here. Where are the belts for this dress? Uh is no one ready? Here. It's a tough call. They're so different. Mm. <laughs> Stanley Tucci the goat. Something funny? No. No, 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 nothing's, you know, it's just that both those belts look exactly the same to me, you know, I'm still learning about this stuff and uh <laughs> this stuff you also completely blow up by rick uh calling rick super controversial though simply not true in comparison to like wang alexander wang is who i was i think mistaking him with by the way so i think you're right or carl lagerfeld oh okay i see you think this has nothing to do <coughs> with you you go to your closet and you select i don't know that lumpy blue sweater for instance because you're trying to tell the world that you take yourself too seriously to care about what you put on your back but what you don't know is that that sweater is not just blue it's not turquoise it's not lapis it's actually cerulean and you're also blithely unaware of the fact that in 2002 oscar de la renta did a collection of cerulean gowns and then i think it was yves saint laurent wasn't it who showed cerulean military jackets i think we need a jacket here mm. And then Cerulean quick Am I a bad person if I don't care about fashion? Fuck no. Not even remotely. What are you talking about? It's just, it's just an interest, okay? Our interests as human beings is what makes us so fucking unique, okay? It's, what, it's just normal. It's normal to be... Uh, it, it's, it's, it's perfectly normal to not give a shit about fashion, okay? It's perfectly normal to not give a shit about fashion, okay? It's, it's perfectly valid. You, you don't become a bad person at all. It's just another interest. That's it. Um, the, the point I'm always trying to stress here, whenever I talk about stuff like this, is that it's, it's valid to... Chad, are you basically the idea of at this point? Yeah, it's, it's valid to, to be interested in things like this. Okay, perfectly valid. Quickly showed up in the collections of eight different designers. I'm going to uh, filter down through Be the apartment stores and then trickle on down into some tragic casual corner where you no doubt fished it out of some clearance bin. However, that blue represents millions of dollars and countless jobs. And it's sort of comical how you think that you've made a choice that exempts you from the fashion industry when in fact... You're wearing a sweater that was selected for you by the people in this room from a pile of stuff. She ate. She did. She left no crumbs. And this is huffing p farts. Yeah, dude. I know. I know. You. You're. You're right. It's. It's totally silly. 
The key part of the scene isn't that Andy doesn't care about fashion, but she's actively judging those who do. She's thinking she's superior because she's not in the fashion scene. Exactly why I showed this, because it's it's one of those things where it is... It's one of those things where it's like it transcends beyond like it, it is a part of your existence, whether you like it or appreciate it or not. If you're putting on a fucking article of clothing, there's a history associated with it. The colors that are being used, the sewing that is being used, the techniques being used uh, have, have come throughout history. There's a reason why people fucking study it, uh, you know, for half a goddamn decade and then go into this business. That's it. Wait, what? Your ticket to six months in Japan? Japan is launching a digital nomad visa that allows people to work remotely from Japan up to six months. If you have an annual income of over 10 million yen, you might qualify. Read more in Japan Times. Yo. What if I walk into Meryl Streep's fashion job naked? Then what's she going to say? Nothing. Because I got no fashion on me. <laughs> True. Okay, fair. You win that one, okay? But you're also going to jail, so... I feel like this chat thinks proximity to luxury fashion equates to being pro-capital, which isn't true at all. Yeah, all the shit gets expensive, but if you think... What? Virginie Baird is hand-sewing Chanel pieces and not the working-class seamstresses in Paris, then... Dot, dot, dot. Like, I think uh, dye workwear does a pretty solid job of, like, merging politics with fashion quite expertly, in my opinion. I'm not just saying that because he fucking finally unblocked me, even though he was he had blocked me for some weird reason uh, beforehand. I don't know why. But, like, uh, he does a good job of this. Like, listen, you guys love Mao, right? You love Mao. He has, like, Mao had iconic fashion, too. Same with fucking Che Guevara. Same with Fidel Castro. These are all... These, these are all uh, uh, historical, important figures that also definitely cared about the way that they look. You know what I mean? It's normal. It's a, it's a form of expression. It basically, it, it genuinely doesn't matter that you think that like these guys are above that sort of thing, but they're not. He apparently blocks you if you disagree with his fashion takes. I've never disagreed with his fashion takes. Yeah, same with the Nazis. Fuck you. Yes. No, you're absolutely right. Same with the Nazis. Exactly. It's another form of expression. I'm not even saying it's good or bad. Okay? So fascism absolutely relied heavily, heavily on aesthetics. Yes, there are entire, there, there's, there are YouTube videos that we've even watched here in, as far as like the, the, um, the aesthetics of of fa uh, the aesthetics of of fashion or not fashion sorry the aesthetic choices of fascists yeah and what that and what that means why it even existed <sighs> yeah But yeah, my first and only well-paying job with Hellsingers without a degree specifically because I perceive as fashionable, familiar with high fashion. Yeah. Anyway. Fascists hated modern and contemporary art. That's why hating on modern art is known as a Nazi trope. Yeah, exactly. They considered they considered anything beyond classical arts uh, to be... Um, they considered anything beyond that to be morally perverse, morally degenerate, re uh, and, and they had a reactionary approach to art as well. 100%. If you want pretty privilege, start dressing nicer. This is a message for chat. Eh. 
it, it, you also have to remember, like, for example, for me, I have a lot of, I have a lot of, of, uh, issues with fashion. A lot of people like dunk on me and make fun of me, but they don't realize that it is because like I have, uh, very bad sizing. Like things don't sit on me in the way that they're supposed to. And it's a, a lot harder to figure out a lot harder to figure out like what looks good because it's, you know, a millionaire circle jerk that art is today is not the things that Nazis hated. What are you talking about? We're not talking about like fucking art Basel and like the weird crypto shit that people are selling. Okay. We're talking about people that are like, I don't know. I mean, I'm not super invested in, in, uh, art so i can't talk about it that much but did you get your stuff tailored no too much too much time and i've probably kind of please get that baki physique there you'll find a problem finding a size that fits dude i don't have the baki physique but uh, no, my sizing is so beyond the norm that it's hard. Knocked them off with my furniture collection to a certain extent. One of my favorite things that I do like to wear, even though I don't wear very many things, is this robe. I've indulged myself with this from my spring summer 17 collection. It is silk taffeta lined with a cotton pele ovo fabric. It is regal and cozy on a winter morning when I'm wandering around having coffee on the terrace. But my favorite object is this one. I was working. I remember when you were in Japan and you said you wanted to get Japanese denim and immediately people said just get normal denim since it was the same thing. Yeah, and remember when I couldn't fit into any of that? Working with a dealer in New York who would send me images of sarcophaguses that were up for auction, and they were always a little bit too colorful, and they always kind of looked a little fake to me. But anyway, finally this one came, and so it was so worth the wait. We call her Liza, after Liza Manette. This motherfucker doesn't like the, the original way that sarcophagus looks. Ellie. Space in this building became available a few years ago, and we entered into an agreement to collaborate with the family that was running it and to turn it into an Owens Court bar. It is part canteen for- Have you ever looked into any Scandinavian brands and designers? You know what's really funny that you said about that? I, when I was in Italy, I walked into a store and I got this beanie, from, and it's called Norse Projects. The brand was called Norse Projects. I just needed a beanie because it was really cold, right? And I had no idea what this actually was. I had no idea what this brand was. I wear it all the time now. It's great, okay? And it turns out, since then, I've actually bought a bunch of their shirts. I've worn a couple of their shirts on stream this week. They actually do fit. At least the Double XL does fit genuinely fit me well so there you go chatter you're you're not wrong norske projects isn't that expensive either it's not very it's not crazy expensive scandinavian brands acne studios our legacy I wrote an entire paper on degenerate art during Hitler's time uh, for an art history class in grad school. Everyone wanted to go see the degenerate art show put on by the Nazis. Lines around the block. The real art shows Hitler approved of were, were, were pretty dead, lol. For our crew, our team that is in the factory right across the street. But it's also for the community. I mean, it's open to everybody. We've included furniture pieces from the Rick Owens Furniture Collection. We have bronze pieces from our accessories and home objects collection. And the pièce de résistance of this space is this mural by my daughter, Scarlet Rouge. This when I said my rich friend that's in the fashion that I understand why the fuck he would spend that money on some flip-flops, he told me that I wouldn't understand it anyway. Tell me that it ain't some pretentious elitist bullshit, brother. 
You are absolutely right. There are certain pieces that people fucking spend a shit ton of money on specifically because of the brand. Okay. And you're 100% correct on that. In my opinion, there is like, there is something to be said about the unique Rick Owens pieces. Even Balenciaga. Balenciaga has a lot of hits, but it has far more misses, in my opinion. Gross as fuck. Like uh, Vetmon, another brand. Okay. I feel like that about Supreme. The irony is Supreme actually isn't fucking expensive if you buy it on retail. It's the only reason why people think Supreme is expensive is because nobody goes to the Supreme store and buys like regular Supreme pieces or buys it retail. They fucking buy it. They only know that uh, they only know like the famous Supreme uh, pieces that are uh, sold in secondary markets. So a lot of that shit is, yeah, going to be way more expensive. I have uh, like two, oh, I have a Supreme t-shirt and a Supreme long sleeve. I bought it at the store when I was, I think I was in France or something. I bought it at the store uh, because I was like, I, I've never been inside of a Supreme store. And it's also not high fashion either, regardless. Um, but I bought it at the store. It was literally the same price of a regular t-shirt. That's it. And it's also the same sizing of a regular t-shirt. Balenciaga should just be runway avant-garde stuff. I think Balenciaga has like really cool things and then a lot of gross like uh, logo mania abundance that I despise. I've always despised it. Shadows don't know about luxury basics. That's why the real bourgeoisie buy, not Gucci and Ricks. Yes, that's the other part of this story as well. It's like now that kind of stuff is becoming more accessible, like the Loro Pianas or whatever the fuck, um, and people know about it. But like what actually super fucking wealthy people buy is... What is now a f trend on TikTok called quiet luxury. It's the stuff that's like cashmere. It's way more reserved. Uh, the, the quality is like really, the quality and the worksmanship is like really elevated, but it doesn't actually, uh, it's not actually like in your face. I don't think Laura Piana, I guess Laura Piana kind of would have fit the bill, but I don't know if it's like actually a part of that. Um, but I love Balmain. Like, see, that's this is what's interesting about this. I despise Balmain. I think Balmain is awful. I think it's dog shit. I'm not going to shit on you for it, but I do think that it is, like, very... I think Balmain is so gaudy. Every... The way I treat... The way I think about fashion is exactly the way I think about, like... Um, the way I think about fashion is exactly the same way I think about like music, right? I know people are going to say, oh, you're fucking, you don't listen to music or something, but like I used to, right? I have, I had artists that I love, right? When you buy a CD as an old person, okay? Or when you stream an artist like new EP, right? I love Yoji Yamamoto, the GOAT. I have a lot of Yoji Yamamoto stuff that I've thrifted, as a matter of fact, and we're very accessible and very cheap. Um, Yoji is... But again, Yoji Yamamoto is a great example. There's some shit that is just really weird, and I don't like it. Okay? But anyway, my point was... My point was... Um, you're not going to like all the songs thrifted in Japan. <laughs> I mean, but I think you can still thrift it in America too. But anyway, um, when you when you listen to your favorite artist and you stream their album, you're not going to like all the songs. Some of those songs you're not going to like at all. Some of those songs are going to be like for the radio. Some of those songs are going to be real hits that you appreciate. And that's the same way I feel about, that is the same way I feel about fashion as well. I look at fashion houses and there are bits and pieces that I appreciate and like, okay? And then there are a, a whole bunch of things that I don't like. Balenciaga is a, is a great example of this. There's some stuff where you're just like, damn, that shit's great. It looks awesome. I, um, one brand that I think is really sick that I love, that I actually don't, not sure you understand women's wear. I don't understand women's wear. I never said I did. Um, for example... One brand that I love right now is Le Mer. Okay. It's incredible. Problem is, their sizing is awful. Okay. 
they're actually relatively affordable for a high uh like a, it's a french brand they're relatively affordable for luxury uh clothing like elevated high high-end clothing okay but unfortunately they have euro sizing and lol they're not affordable no it's like if you are looking at luxury clothing two hundred dollars for pants is affordable in comparison to what the other brands are selling And no, I didn't crash the website. I tried to get on the website and I couldn't get on it before I even said Lemaire. So, because I wanted to show it to you. <laughs> 